very meaningful uh, in that short run. Final point. Uh, you know, there's an old adage, and I think it goes to what the governor was just saying as it relates to wildfires and everything else. There's no leak on your side of our boat. We rise and fall together. And this notion of interdependence on this border, particularly between Nevada and California, um, is profoundly important. And not just important in terms of uh, the work that we are doing here today, but across the spectrum of supports. And I just can't impress upon you more. Uh, I've been Lieutenant Governor of California for years and years, Governor of California. We've worked with a number of governors. No governor has been more responsive to the needs on our side of the border. Uh, and in return, I can assure you, uh, we recognize our responsibility to do the same for Nevada. And so it's just a point of personal privilege uh, how honored and pleased I am of not only governor's leadership, but his friendship and his support uh, for so many issues that don't generate headlines, don't show up in press releases, uh, but are worked through staff by staff, member by member, day in and day out. And so, Governor, it's great to be here, and uh, thank you again for getting me here and getting our focus and attention on this critical issue. Matt? You're to answer any questions. So we have, you've you got leadership of CHV assembled here. Uh, we are looking across the spectrum. Um, and I know the governor has been, is doing a number of things on this side of the border as well. We're looking at precisely issues like that relating to speed limits, signage generally. Uh, we're looking at new striping that goes above and beyond just the shoulder improvements that we'll be advancing to get that third lane uh, and allow at least on Sunday and Mondays during those peaks uh, to be able to utilize those lanes. So yes. All of the above, all of that's in the basket of consideration. But I think what I'm hearing and what I heard from the governor, what tends to happen so often, I've done this long enough to know this, is that we have these discussions and months, years go by and nothing gets done. Particularly when it comes to freeways, highways, there's a lot of sensitivity there, understandably. There's a lot of public safety concerns, a lot of constituencies uh, that have to be addressed. Uh, there's a deep urgency for us to meet this moment. And I just want you to know that. We're not passively interested in trying to episodically solve this. We're here for the long haul. I want to get this fixed, uh, and I made that crystal clear to my team. And that team includes public safety, includes Caltrans, uh, their transportation folks, and as the governor and I were just talking, also includes the Biden administration. And uh, we will be very active in terms of our joint efforts to find discretionary dollars uh, from the Build Back Better plan, which inevitably will be uh, supported, at least in some way, shape, or form, and some of the existing transportation dollars. And I think that is going to aid our efforts by looking at strategies to jointly package requests in a competitive environment instead of competing against one another. And so that's also part of the package as well. How long did it take that? I just want to add, Cole, before you go, that I want to give a special shout out to CHP that is here and Nevada State Police that are here. Not just ones that are here, all of the men and women on both of those agencies and Caltran and NDOT that are really integral part of this solution. We appreciate they work for us every single day keeping people safe on these freeways and hopefully what we're going to do here is going to make their job a little easier and they're going to have a little uh, less difficulty along the way. So go ahead, Cole. Just how long could it be until we see those more permanent solutions or plans for those at least? And what might those look like? Well, now I know I, look, there's, there's a sense we need to expand that three lanes, deal with this three, two, three lane bottleneck. Uh, and, and that's, look, we'll take a look at that. There's some, there's some deeper issues that get into process that are legitimate process considerations that could get in the way of immediate progress. So as we immediately scoped the longer term, we started to figure out what's the short term above and beyond just putting some signs up and, and just doing a few quick stripes, which respectfully, Governor, he didn't want to see that happen. He said, please, please just don't do something cosmetic. And so we came back, and this is why it was an extra week or so, to figure out what's, what's a more meaningful first step. And we believe this commitment to do the real striping, you'll start seeing that in the next few months, and you'll start, you'll start seeing that work being done. And it will be done by this summer. And I'm holding them to account. That's on me to get it done by the summer, uh, to get that third lane, that five miles fully done. The larger issue has to be scoped across a spectrum of interest groups. Uh, you've got the competing points of view as it relates to Brightline. You've got environmental considerations, with tribal considerations. 
We have jurisdictional issues across the spectrum as it relates to the relationship with cities and counties. All of those issues and groups and timelines and public process have to be considered and reviewed. We'll do that in parallel with this interim study. Uh, Mike, you said this is I want to say that I'm not, I'm not just trying to be nice to your governor. I know it's uh, in this kind of stuff, we, we, you, you wanna, we all want to focus on friction and dialectic. He just called and asked and said, can you focus on this? And then he followed up. He said, he followed up within a couple days. I'm like, Steve, give me a couple more days. I literally, it's a weekend uh, to figure this out. And and then I came back with something, and I'm now talking out of school. He said, that's not good enough. I love that. It was honest. And we came back. And so that's what's different. And, uh, and, and I, I was a bit concerned because I wanted to fulfill a portion of his request in the immediate. I was worried about the appropriations process. I have to submit a budget in January. You've got to wait until uh, June, July, and then there's a process, September, October. I, we didn't want to see that happen, and so I think most meaningfully for us is we were able to move money uh, within our existing budget, and that was the big game changer. And we are privileged. We just ran an $80 billion operating surplus last year. We're projecting another rather large one next year. Uh, we are uniquely resourced to be able to get this done. Well, it's so urgent now, it's been urgent the whole time, but as Governor Newsom said, I don't believe in just, you know, getting on TV and complaining or sending out press releases. The relationship that we have with the state of California that I have with Governor Newsom has been incredible on numerous fronts, not just this. And I'm not ashamed to say that when we became aware of just how bad this is, I've been governor now for not quite three years, uh, to pick up the phone, as he said, and call him. and said, look, Governor, I need some help. And I cannot say enough about the state of California and Governor Newsom, what he does. Uh, California is very lucky to have him. He recognized the problem that we had, and we continue to have And He said, okay, we're going to be able to help you. Let's figure out a way. So that's why today. Sometimes things are a lot easier than they appear, aren't they? I guess that's really maybe the big message of today. That said, the longer-term strategies here are, I don't want to overpromise. And, and so I'm mindful of that. But these interim strategies, we think, will make a, a demonstrable impact in the next six months. And, uh, and we'll monitor that. You'll monitor that. The governor will monitor that. And we'll have the opportunity to be iterative in that process. And, and if there are additional things in the process of scoping that we can do in the short run, uh, I'm all in. And uh, we, again, look forward to working together to get, draw down those federal dollars for these longer-term permanent strategies. Yeah, so we're working with CHP. Those details be worked out. We'll start with the scoping and the striping and obviously the repaving uh, of the shoulder. But, and look, the initial response on the shoulder was some concern because that's an access point to deal uh, with accidents and deal with life safety issues. Uh, but we were able to accommodate those concerns in the short run. And so we'll work through those nuances and details. Uh, we put a timeline that's firm. We have a budget now where we've identified the exact projected total $12 billion, a million dollars, um, of which 3.6 is for, I mean, they, they've scoped this pretty well to give me confidence that we uh, have not only a, a strategy and announcement here, but we have a plan of action that we can actually deliver on. Uh, as it relates to the exact time, Sunday, Monday is what is being proposed at the moment. Obviously, you have other peak times, other long weekends, other holiday issues. Uh, obviously, we'll work those things out respectively between uh, the state troopers and CHP and with Pension Visitors Bureau here, our side of the aisle, too. So that will allow us flexibility, but that's sort of a scoping consideration for the moment. But again, those details are fine. both working with Brightline as it relates to the high-speed train. I was down in uh, 
Florida to actually ride the train because it was that important to me, and it's uh, it's impressive, you know, what they're doing, and we're working on certain right away issues and with the Bright Line folks. So I know the governor's committed to it. Uh, I'm certainly committed to it. Anything we can do to relieve this congestion and help the citizens of both states is something we're anxiously working towards. And uh, again, the pandemic slowed things down as relates to access to bonds. The state of California is not putting in direct dollars up to private project, as you know. That said, there's bonding authority that the state is providing for technical assistance, gone through a NEPA process of some environmental considerations relying on crossings, bighorn sheep issues. We're working through all of those. Our two senators, Vinny and Feinstein, are concerned about some of the specific wildlife crossing issues. All of those things in real time are being addressed. We want to keep this thing on uh, a schedule now, particularly as we come out of this pandemic, uh, and uh, again, address the ongoing anxieties, not only as it relates to the short term, but obviously addressing those long term uh, issues in terms of that cross border traffic. With that, okay. thank you all. Yeah, thank thank you all for coming, and I really want to one more time thank Governor Newsom and the state of California for helping us on our issue that's been so important to us for so long. And this is the beginning of a long term solution, and we're looking forward to getting there. So thank you all for being here.